Hello everyone and welcome back to Skyrogue. This is episode 4, and in episode 3 I said we'd be going to the Lilat system. And that's because in the custom missions tab here, I have versus Starwolf and versus Starwolf 2. So we're going to do both of these today. We'll start with versus Starwolf. And this is going to be a mission where I have to go solo against the Wolf and Mark 1. And of course, what better aircraft to go up against the legendary uh, Androsian mercenaries than the Arwing? Now I got a couple different versions of the Arwing from somebody on the Steam Workshop. Again, I'll have their name in the description. So we've got, let's see what we got here. We've got Arwing Defender. I think this is from Star Fox 2. Interceptor, also probably from Star Fox 2. We've got the Arwing Starfighter, which I believe, I believe this is a reference to the Star Fox from the SNES. Or, no, I think this one's more closely related to the one from the Nintendo 64. Okay, this is the SNES Arwing. Uh, Arwing Mark II. So, this one actually might be closer to the Nintendo 64 version. So then, what what is what is this one based on then? Hmm. Anyway, so we got that, and we got the Arwing Mark II C, which is based on the Arwing from. Uh, Star Fox Command, for those of you who remember that game on the Nintendo DS. So I think I think we're gonna go we're not gonna go SNES because I'm not really a huge fan of how that looks. So we're gonna go N64 style. And we've also got a skin for it, which is somewhere in this huge list. Let's see. I think it is somewhere... It's on the Ace Combat ones. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, Arwing SNES. Skywolf. Alright, so we'll go Arwing SNES. The blue colorings, and for weapons, let's see. I will give this one... We'll try out the twin Vulcans. The IR missile and needs something. Can we put standard missiles there? No. Let's try. Oh, we can't put that on there. Cool. And we'll put the Put the turbo boost on. No, we can't. We can only do flares. Alright, flares works just fine. Alright, I think that's everything. So let's hop in. Starbox launch. There we go. Because I'm going to put uh, actual. Star Fox music over this. There we go. So we got the whole Star Wolf squadron dead ahead. And I am all by myself. Four Wolfens, one Arling. Sounds like a fair fight. They get first shot, since I'm using the IR missile. I can only like, fire from behind. Let's just try to finish him off with the guns. Oop, I hit him. Now, our wings didn't have flares in Star Fox, but I think in this case we can. Oh! We can make an exception. 
Yeah, Star Fox is one of my favorite gaming franchises ever. Uh, I've played 64, I've played Assault, I've played Command, and I've played Zero. Only game I haven't played, but I haven't played the original for the SNES. I have also not played Adventures, and I don't want to. For me, personally, like just looking at it, Adventures is the absolute low point of the series. And I know some people will disagree with that and say, like, Command or Assault was the low point, but... The problem with Adventures is that it just isn't a Star Fox game. It really isn't. Adventures is a totally different game that, at some point, Nintendo decided to put the Star Fox brand on. And it could have worked if it was... I don't know, if it was a bit more like a Star Fox game, like if there were more flying sections or whatnot, but... Uh, and the thing is, like, I get sometimes you want to give your fans new experiences, but Star Fox is one of those franchises where there's a certain set of expectations. Nice gun kill there. Actually, when I get down to the last one, I'm going to see if I can gun him down with just the gun. Okay, the, the IR missiles are kind of cheating. I fully admit that. I might I might just do this over again with stock weapons to make it a bit more interesting. But there is that uh, there is that Star Wolf 2 mission. So maybe that'll be a bit more challenging. Uh, anyway, back to uh, adventures. Yeah, so I, I get that sometimes developers want to create new experiences for their players just so that the, the game or the franchise doesn't get stale. But there are times when you can go too far away from what people expect out of a franchise and it ends up it ends up backfiring badly. Which I think was the case with adventures. It might be a decent adventure game, it's just not a Star Fox game and it's hard. And that's not even because they introduced Crystal. I mean, yeah, they, she's got that really skimpy outfit, which I really wish they would have gone closer to the concept art for her when it was still Dinosaur Planet, but oh well. At least she improves slightly in Assault, and then Command kind of waffles back and forth between whether or not she's a decent character. But enough about my complaining uh, bad Star Fox experience, let's talk about some good ones. 64 is a really fun time. It's short, it's sweet, it gets to the point, and it's got all those different pathways, so it's pretty replayable, and it's also a fun ta challenge to try to get all of those medals. Now, uh, Command is... Command is good for a portable experience, and it allows you to use every single member of the Star Fox team individually. So they all get to be badasses this time. Nobody is begging for someone else to get a bogey off their tail, so that's nice. And I, I also like the variety of ships in that game, so you can experiment with different play styles. Uh, I like the top-down map overview, which introduces a level of strategy. Uh, my only problem with Command was all of its endings. Like, some of the endings were just awful. Uh, and then Assault. Assault was okay, it was just way too short, and there were too many ground missions. If there were more space missions, more missions in general, and if there weren't as many ground missions, it would have been fantastic. Because the, the graphics are pretty good, uh, the voice acting is not that great, but the soundtrack for that game is the best that a Star Fox soundtrack has ever been. And I say that even with Zero coming out, because Assault was fully orchestrated. Zero uses electronics a little bit, or a lot, so, yeah. And then Zero, the, the big controversial thing was its motion controls. I didn't find them all that bad, to be honest, and I just wish the game was either a little bit longer or had two different endings like 64, but other than that, I think Zero is a, a perfectly servable, if slightly 
disappointing entry because I was kind of expecting either a sequel to Assault or some form of picking up the story after one of Command's endings. But since everybody loves 64, I guess Nintendo decided that the best thing to do would just be another remake of Star Fox. So we'll see where it goes from here. I hope we got a sequel soon. Uh, anyway, we're in versus Star Wolf 2, where Wolf and his buddies get their upgraded Wolfens. And now I'll launch with the same Star Wolf. They're really cool. I don't like them more than Star Fox, because I tend to like hero characters more than villains anyway. But I really like the idea of sort of a rival mercenary squadron whose sole purpose is to shoot down Star Fox. And Wolf O'Donnell is one of my favorite villain characters in all of fiction. He's got that great voice, he's a really skilled pilot, but he also has this begrudging respect for Fox. Then you've got Leon, who is basically a serial killer in the sky. You've got... In the original team, you've got Pigma, who's just in it for the money. He's a greedy, greasy, no-good swine. Now uh, you've got Andros, you've got uh, Oinkany, who is the nephew of Andros, who is nothing... He's the Slippy of Star, Fox, or Star Wolf. Now, Andrew, Andrew Oinkany is the Slippy of Star Wolf. He's just, he's just there to act tough, but really he's not that good. Um, and then, last but certainly not least, There's, um... Wait, didn't I, did I go through them already? Let's see, Wolf, Leon, yeah. So that's that's all four members of the original team, and then in... They don't show back up again until Assault, where you find out, at some point, Andrew left to start his own rebellion against Carnaria. Pigma was kicked out, presumably due to something stupid that he did during a mission, likely for money. And... A new member joined the team in the form of Panther Caruso, or Caruso. The translation errors are very annoying. Anyway, Panther shows up and he's sort of... He doesn't really share any character traits with either Pigma or uh, Andrew. He's sort of this suave but still very deadly... Uh, ace pilot, and he's actually a pretty decent pilot, too, if, if the lore is anything to be believed. He's also a huge Casanova. Like, he will hit on any woman that he finds attractive, particularly Crystal. But just for the voice alone and for his name and the fact that in Command he gets a cool... Uh, he gets a cool flamenco-style theme, he's actually one of my... I think he might be my favorite... Star Wolf member other than Wolf himself. Yeah, speaking of Wolf, bring him back to Smash, Nintendo. What are you doing? He was great in Brawl, and then you just left him. But we can add back in Ice Climbers and put in the, the Inklings from Splatoon. I don't know. I don't even have a Switch, so it doesn't really matter that much to me. But, uh, yeah, this fight also went by pretty quickly, largely due to these IR missiles and the fact that the enemy isn't actually as maneuverable as I thought they would be. Even gunning them down has been surprisingly easy. You disappoint me, Wolf. I, I say that, but I think it is really cool that, that somebody actually went through the trouble of making AI Wolfens to fight, and the, the R-Wing model. Because honestly, the, the, the low-poly R-Wing is perfect for this sort of game. You can almost just play this game entirely with uh, the Corneria track from the SNES Star Fox. Finish him off with an IR. 
There we go. That is Star Wolf round two all done. Uh, with the last video, let's take a bit of a closer look at the map here. It's set up a bit like a maze, actually. We've got some, some icy mountains over here. we got a bit of a ravine with some water in it down here. I, I think this is actually meant to represent that floating city on Corneria and Assault. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway. Let's head on back to the carrier. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. A lot shorter than I thought it would be, but I guess it was only 1v4 as opposed to 1v40 from Operation Countdown. So yeah, there is the Star Fox missions and the Star Fox and Star Wolf arrows. If you want them, they are both up on the Steam Workshop. Again, I'll have the author's names in the description for proper credit. I did not make any of this. I just wanted to show it off, so thanks for watching. And if you want to see more, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.